Hello my loves, welcome back to another video. I'm Ashley and today we're going to be doing my May wrap up. May turned into a month of me just continuing series, which is very strange because that very rarely happens. But I'm not gonna complain about it. If it happens, it happens. I read six books in May, which isn't loads, but I do have some chunkier ones or some which just took me a little bit longer to read, so let's just get on into it. One of the first books I read in May was Wind Witch by Susan Dennett. This one I read for Witchlands Along, hosted by Jade at Jade Ray Reads, and we have done a live show for this, so I'll leave a link to that down below if you're interested. It's all spoilery, so make sure you've read it if you are going to check that out. But this is the second book in the Truth Witch series, Truth Witch being about two girls, one of which is a Truth Witch, which means that she can tell if somebody's lying or if something's just false. And they're trying to keep that secret because she would be considered a very powerful political tool, but that secret very quickly gets out and so we delve into a whole host of political plot lines. The first book I rated about three stars, this one was a 3.5, which doesn't sound like that much of an increase, but I enjoyed this one a lot more. I feel like it just made a lot more sense because in the first book we had so many convoluted plot lines whereas in this one some of the characters come together and there's a very clear distinction between them all and so it just starts to come together a lot more and obviously with the background knowledge of the first book we can understand this one without having to discover lots of new things. And I found it interesting in this one because there was a lot that continued in terms of there's a lot to do with the magic that is unexpected and we're still learning about the magic. As well as that we have the progression of relationships and seeing more of the characters. I loved the introduction of new characters and I really feel like they added so much to the story and it all just started to settle into place. I feel like the pacing also settled a little bit. There were some times where I thought okay this is going a little bit too quick and there was information that I kind of had to go back and read because it would just drop information in the middle of a really fast paced scene which is something that I had a fault with with the first book but this one just seemed to level out a lot more and be taken more in its stride and I was quite surprised by that because I think this one is either the same size or a little bit shorter than the first book I don't know but I definitely enjoyed this one a lot more I think that everything just started to make a lot more sense and so I'm quite intrigued to see where the series continues I think it does have the potential to continue getting better with each book and with the next book being centered on my favorite characters I think I'm going to enjoy that one even more. So as I said, 3.5 for this one and we shall see where the rest of the series goes. We also have Fool's Errand by Robin Hobb for Elder Lingalong. This is the first book in the Tony Man trilogy and it's made me sob my heart out. I can't really say what this series in particular is about because it would be a spoiler for the first series, which is the Farseer trilogy, but Robin Hobb is a favourite author of mine. We've been reading all of her books and will continue to read all of her books, but this one just... <laughs> reached another level of pain. I cannot express how good Robin Hobb is at writing. She's so clever and even though the thing that would make you cry you knew was going to happen from the beginning, she still manages to pack that punch and I just think it's so impressive to give your audience so much emotion while reading. We were all just sobbing our hearts out like <laughs> literally in the live stream for this book. We all just start crying. Besides Jade but most of us start crying. And it makes me scared to read the next one, but I can't not read the next one because it's so good. It's just so good. This one had a really interesting take because we have left the life that we knew beforehand, but we do kind of return to it, but things are different and it's, it's a really interesting one. This one's very much about the chase. We're trying to find something and we don't really know what to anticipate because we've been away from the series for so long. So everything's familiar, but also a little bit different and it's such, a complicated set of emotions that we see in our main character and I think it's just so smart to be able to portray that because the level of depth that goes into the mindset of these characters and how much you can see the past has affected them but while the present is also like drawing them back in it's just so smart it's so clever I love it so much we also start to see all of the series and all of the books that we've read so far start to come together in this book which just makes it so satisfying because you see references and just do that little giddy dance when you start pinpointing things, you have even more theories open up. I could fangirl about Robin Hobb for an incredibly long time, and I have done for about a year now. <laughs> so this blew my mind, and I honestly think this is my favorite Robin Hobb book so far, which is a bold claim, but here we are. <laughs> we then also have The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin, which is the second book in the Broken Earth series. I really, really loved the fifth season. This one, not so much. I was a little bit disappointed by this one. I rated it three stars in comparison to the five stars I gave the first book because we just seemed to hit a bit of a lull. This book felt like a lot of information was being given 
Apart from it wasn't, it was just a lot of conversation. It was a lot of figuring out, it was a lot of conversations that just didn't really seem to go anywhere. We never reached a conclusion, we never did anything with it, we were just kind of existing for a lot of this book. Which was such a shame because I was so impressed with the first book, that one again was a fantasy which I would just consider intelligent, like it seemed really cleverly put together. And we just reached a bit of a standstill in this one because any kind of investigations we were doing, any information we were discovering, didn't really hit the same. And I don't know whether it's because my expectations were so high after loving the first book so much, but at the same time, I could see glimpses of that. So I just didn't know what was lost because the glimpses that I would see it in would be in Nesun's chapters, who I didn't necessarily like as a character, but she was introduced. And I thought that she introduced a really interesting perspective in regards to her relationship and also what her perspective adds to the story that we already knew. The psychology behind her perspective is just fascinating because it's so complicated, but also understandable with how she's been raised. So I really enjoyed her chapters and I'm intrigued to see where her story goes, but the rest of it just felt a little bit flat for me. It was still good. I was still kind of engaged, but I probably could have put this book down in all honesty and just not really bothered about it, which is such a shame, like I said, after enjoying the first book so much. So I'm hoping that the third book will pick up a little bit. Even if it doesn't reach the five star standard, I'm hoping it still hits four stars at least because at the minute, I really have complicated opinions over the series because of how varied the ratings have been. So it's a weird one. Don't really know what to do with it. We also have Night's Shadow by Sebastian de Castel. This one is the second in the Great Coast series. In the first book, Tracer's Blade, we follow three men who used to be Great Coats, King's Men. The King has now died, so they're just kind of roaming around and they end up in the wrong place at the wrong time and end up blamed for murder because of it. So they are on the run and they get wrapped up in a whole host of political plot lines that just end up a big hot mess. This is a series which definitely has a kind of sarcastic humour that I really really love especially through dialogue and I I did initially struggle with this one I got about 200 pages in and I wasn't eager to pick it up but then I started reading along with the audiobook and the audiobook just saved everything I ended up adoring this book after listening to the audiobook because it just sounds better audibly it's just a book that works really really well when you actually hear it because so much of what drives this plot forward is the dialogue because we have a group of people when they're trying to progress something when they're trying to theorize about what to do and what's going on they do that out loud to each other and we see that in the story so not only do we have the actual plot being progressed through the dialogue but we do also have the humor and it just hits better because it's not in my voice it's in their voices and it just works so incredibly well and I'm so pleased I did actually pick up the audiobooks. I do think it saved this experience for me. I don't know if I would have finished the book if it was just left to my own devices because I wasn't sure if I was feeling it but then I ended up absolutely adoring it. This is definitely a gory series. Uh, there are some very intense scenes <laughs> and very intense torture scenes so do be on the lookout for that but otherwise it's just a gritty fantasy that you can really get your teeth stuck into especially with a book this long and the rest of the series is just going to continue that way. I imagine. Very heavily political plotline, so if you like that kind of thing then I would highly recommend the series. I also really love the female characters in this book as well, I think they added really interesting dynamics to it and I won't say that the entire thing was unpredictable because there was quite a lot that I saw actually. It didn't end the way I expected it to and so I'm intrigued to see where the next book goes when I do pick that up. So I rated this one at four stars. And then of course we have the two books that I read for Do The Thingathon. I'll leave a link to that vlog down below because that kind of has my reactions as I was reading it so it might be a little bit more like detailed in terms of the little knickknacks but my main read for that readathon was Son of the Shadows by my main read for the Readathon of Wars of the Shadows by Juliette Rillier, which is the second book in the Seven Waters series and a book I've been meaning to read for two years now. So I'm very pleased to have read it. The Seven Waters series is very heavily based on Celtic folklore and it's a very slow moving, like seeps into your bones type fantasy is what I always call it. So I adore it because of the folklore and the vibes of that definitely continued in this one. I will say that this one felt a lot slower than the first book, if such a thing was possible. I think because this one had less of a clear direction. For this one, we followed the daughter of the first book. And so we see the kind of after effects of what happened, but we do also have a bit of intensity in that the main character is kidnapped by a reviled mercenary, but there's also a forbidden romance between them. <laughs> and you know that from the beginning, 
and you can see where this is going from the beginning but where it's going is basically like marriage and love and so there's less of a thing to actually combat there is a prophecy that they're trying to avoid but you know the first book had a literal curse that they were breaking like actively in that book whereas this one's just kind of like relationships are happening. Just knocked my camera so apologies if we moved but I completely forgot what I was saying. I know I said that I enjoyed the first book more and there were times in this where I felt a tiny bit bored just because of how sore pissed it was without that direction that the first book had but this also made me cry. <laughs> Not loads but it did make me cry because this had one of the most beautiful and like heartbreaking death scenes I've ever seen and with such an emphasis on storytelling it was just a really lovely moment. In fact there were many lovely moments put down to storytelling in this book and again it just kind of felt like a folkloric thing all over again and it was just really impressive to me. I think Juliet really really has a masterful way of writing and just dealing with folklore elements. I also found it really impressive because the main character is doing a lot of the high intensity stuff with a child. <laughs> like she's literally carrying around a baby for a lot of it which I didn't think I'd enjoy seeing all that much but it was definitely an interesting take because the main character of this, a lot of her badassery just comes from being stubborn and wanting to make her own choices which was really lovely to see because it's not like she needed anything miraculous even though she did have things like the sight which is seen as a gift from the fair folk but I don't know there was just something, there's always something that Juliet really does with her main protagonists that I just absolutely adore and that is make them very distinct and again the same exact thing happened in this one. That was definitely one of my favourite things about this book. I think everything else was just kind of like enjoyable, it was fine. I didn't really feel the angst of the romance or anything for instance considering it was meant to be a forbidden love but I did largely enjoy this book for the most part so I rated it four stars. And then finally I picked up The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle L. Jensen which honestly I don't really have many thoughts on because the synopsis of this book gives a lot of it away. <laughs> so the synopsis I would kind of cut short just by saying that Laura is trained to become a kind of spy assassin person. She's a princess of a king and that king sends her to the king of the bridge kingdom to marry him in the hopes of bringing down the bridge kingdom. That's where I would leave the synopsis. However the one on the back does go further than that and I think that it just gave away a little bit too much and so I was expecting absolutely everything that happened in this book. Not a single moment took me by surprise. I did still enjoy it and I can see why it's an addictive read. I can see why a lot of people recommend this one on the basis if you enjoy fantasy romance. Although even then, I don't think the romance part was all that heavy. <laughs> it could just be because it's a short one. I've discovered that the first books in series of books this short seem to kind of hold back on the romance part. But you know, I was kind of wanting that a little bit more so there was that but also it followed a very general plot line in terms of I don't predict things, I really don't. So a combination of that and again the synopsis just really took any element of surprise out of this book for me so this honestly was a little bit underwhelming because while I did enjoy it I really liked the dialogue. The dialogue was one of my favourite parts of this because again we've got snarky remarks, we've got the witty humour, the kind of banter going back and forth that I just love. I really don't have that much to say and <laughs> I feel like I consumed it so quickly which in itself is a big praise because it was so easy to take in that like I said it does have an addictive quality to it. It just felt quite unremarkable to me which was a shame because I know this one has so much hype. I will continue with the next book because it left off in a very interesting place and I'm intrigued to see where the rest of the series goes because like I said this one was everything I expected it to be so I'm wondering if the second book will kind of throw in a few things that will take me by surprise. I suppose there's only one way to find out. I did find it quite funny because everyone in this is ruthless <laughs> so it seemed that everyone would jump to an extreme very very quickly and I found it quite funny. I don't know if that's the reaction I was meant to have but it was an enjoyable experience and I would recommend it. I was just hoping for a little bit more so I rated it three stars. And with that being said those are all the books that I read in May. Like I said a lot of sequels, only one of them wasn't a sequel so I feel quite chuffed about that. Yeah a mix of three and four stars pretty standard month to be fair. So as always let me know if you read any of these books, let me know if you took part in Do The Thingathon, did you find your favourite book in May, do let me know down in the comments. But for now I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already then please consider doing so, down in the description box you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now I hope you have a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!